Okay, here's the worst offender. Non-graphic calculator test. One like this. Okay, now <clears throat> on this one, there's you can make this much, much easier. There's a lot of strategy involved in this. Okay, so let's grab this where you can see it. About on this Say it again. Yes, you want to simplify this because now, now look at this. The way it's written right now, this is just an ugly monster. Okay, you got to do. You've got a quotient. Within the quotient, you've got a product in the numerator, and so that's going to be lots of unnecessary layers of differentiation, and then I mean that's going to be a mess. So this is one where we definitely want to pre-simplify. Now look what we can do if we. If we distribute the top out, I'm just going to get a polynomial in the top, right? And then if I get a polynomial in the top, then I'm dividing each term by x cubed. That's that trick we looked at this morning again, right? We can just separate those into you know, separate terms, each with its own power of x. And then it's a really easy derivative, okay? So let's do that. All right, so if I distribute, well, let's just work in the numerator now. If I distribute the x minus 5, what am I going to x from distributing the x all the way through, yeah. then I get it. Okay, and look what happens. Yeah, we get a ton of cancellation. We get some horizontal cancellation terms that add to zero. So we get the 5x squared cancel, the 25x is cancel, and that's no big deal, right? I've got two terms on the top. If I divide both of those terms by x cubed, what am I going to get? x cubed over x cubed is 1. Yeah, can you see that? Minus 125 over x cubed, but that just puts the x cubed on the top as a negative power. Now, if I differentiate, derivative of 1, 0. <clears throat> negative 3 times negative 125 is 370. Okay, good. I didn't have the 3. 375, x to the, which they want us to probably write in terms of a positive exponent. So, 375 over x to the 4th. Done. Okay. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Way, way, way easier than trying to just brute force dive through this thing. Okay. So attack it. There's like a sock. Okay. Yes, there is. Yeah. 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 That one. That one. That one. That one. I think that's on the Moodle site. It is? Yeah. yeah. The handout. If it's not, I will put it there. The handout with all the trig identities. Okay, so find dy dx. Now, this is just a, uh, you know, this is like a new product, right? I'm going to differentiate term by term. So the derivative of 7 is 0. Now, what about this? I've got this negative 7. I could just keep out front, right? So we're just going to pull that guy out front, and then I'm going to have product rule in here, right? Always a good idea to just pull those. That way we don't have to keep messing with them the whole way through. At the end, we can redistribute, but pull them out front and forget about them until we're done with the calculus. Now I've got the derivative of x squared times sine x. That's product. So I, I get x squared times the derivative of sine x, which is okay, plus sine x times the derivative of x squared, prime, right? Which is, okay, got it. Just 
distribute the negative 7, and you're done. That's it. Yeah. So I get negative 7 x squared cosine x minus 14x squared sine x. Did I get that right? Okay, questions? Question over here, is that making sense? This is probably a little harder than my last one. Okay, what do we do here? break this up into sines and cosines and, and simplify it. <clears throat> now if you look at the, let's look at the kind of cost benefit analysis of this. If I do that, I'm going to get cosines and sines, which are easier derivatives, right? But I got to do a bunch of, you know, simplification to, I, I'd say probably just do cosine, right? Because secant, secant's not a bad derivative. What's the derivative of secant x? Secant x tangent x, good. So if we if we differentiate this, now you got to be a little careful though because the quotient rule we have to be a little more particular. There's an order to that that we can't. Good. Okay. So minus Now hang on. It's the bottom times derivative of the top. Yeah. Right. B D U minus U D V. So bottom times derivative of the top. What's the derivative of the top? Okay. Now what? Minus. Minus. Important. Minus. Minus. Top. Times derivative of the bottom. Okay. Well what's the derivative of one? Ah, zero. So it's just secant x tangent x again, right? Does that make sense? The derivative of the bottom is still just secant x tangent x, and then all over the bottom, bottom squared. So I've got the quantity 1 plus secant x quantity squared. Okay, now, quick question here, because people do this so often. Can I just distribute that power to both parts? No. no, I cannot. Because this means I'm going to, if I FOIL that out, I'm going to get a bunch of cross terms over here. Right? It's not that simple. All right, so now let's <clears throat> let's simplify this. If I distribute the one, I distribute the secant x tangent x to both terms. I'm going to get secant x tangent x, right? And you see why I'm distributing that way? Because this is just one factor. I mean, it's one big, I mean, there's two parts to it. There's two factors within this big group. But I'm distributing this over the sum. Does that make sense? So all this stuff gets multiplied. Because I have a plus sign there, I'm going to distribute this way. So I get secant x tangent x plus secant squared x tangent x, right? Minus, ah, what's that? All over 1 plus secant x quantity squared, but we get horizontal cancellation. Those go away. And so we got something relatively simple. I think 
think that's what they want. I mean, they didn't say to write it in terms of signs or cosines or anything. So yeah, that's it. That's all they want. Make sense? Okay. Piecewise function. Okay. This was commonly missed one. Let's take another guess. Okay, so <clears throat> now where, I, when you look at the, at the help me solve this stuff, they always tell you to graph the piecewise function. I, you know, I don't really have to do that. that. That seems like kind of a, if you have a graphing calculator, great. But if you don't, this is the non-graphing calculator class. So I, I, I don't think I'd recommend that. I think you can do this other ways. Now where would a function not be differentiable? Well, let's start with the Okay. Well, okay. Good. Wherever, wherever it's discontinuous, right? So, we remember, remember our statement. Uh, differentiability implies continuity. That's important. So, differentiability means the ability to take the derivative, right? If I can take the derivative, that means it has to be continuous. But the converse is not necessarily true. You can have a continuous function that's still not differentiable. Where sharp corner. Sharp corner. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. So. It needs to be continuous, so any kind of place where we would have a discontinuity makes it not differentiable. Could be a asymptote, could be a break in the function, could be a hole in the function. Okay, so we got to look for those. And then the other one that's a little harder to find is the sharp corner one. Now, how do we know if we have a sharp corner? What would that? What would betray that if we're looking at a function and this is happening, where it's doing something like that? <clears throat> well, if it were an absolute value function, but it wouldn't necessarily have to be an absolute value function. How would I know? Uh, how would I spot that? Okay, but but even if it if it connects, it could be doing this, right? It could be going like that, and that's that doesn't have a sharp corner. What's the difference between that and that? What's what's the ant? What's the difference that the ant is sensing he here, as he walks from the left oh, yeah. and from the right? Maybe the, the, the slopes. The slopes are going through a sudden change here, right? Ants from the left and the right have different slope sensor readings if for a sharp corner. But if it's not a sharp corner, walking from the left and the right on these separate pieces of the function, they still sense the same slope coming into that junction, that breaking point. And so our test then, if we want to know if that's happening, if we have a sharp corner, what we'd have to do is we'd have to find out what the value of the derivative is of this function at that point, right? As we approach that point, does that make sense? And what the derivative of this function is as we approach that point. Does that make sense? And if we get the same values, if we're approaching the same value, then we know we don't have a sharp corner. Okay? That's the hardest one to, to determine. The other ones are pretty simple. Okay, so let's let's look at this thing. Uh, are there first of all are there breaks in the function? <clears throat> if I look at this, if I evaluate this thing, if I let x equal negative two to find out what values we're approaching from both sides, right? So what, what am I going to get there? And technically, I'd want to write that this way. I'd want to write the limit of x plus three squared as x approaches negative 2 from the left, right? We're approaching through values less than negative 2. Is what? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no. What's that going to be? Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. negative yeah. 2. You're right. You're right. Okay. Yeah, negative 2. You're right. 1. Not 3. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, what's the limit? What's the limit of this piece of the function? 2x plus 5 as x approaches negative 2 from the right. Because that's going to be, there's one of our boundaries. There's one. I'm going to get one again, right? Now, because those are equal, we 
know that is there a discontinuity there? No. The ant is stepping smoothly from this piece to this piece, right? He anticipates stepping on the same places. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, okay, so what about down here? We can check the same thing. We've got uh, the limit of 2x plus 5 as x approaches 5 from the left, good, is 15, right? And the limit of 6 minus x quantity squared as x approaches, yeah, 5 from the right is what? 1, good. Okay. And so those are different. And so we know, absolutely, we have, at 5, we have a break in the function, right? Okay, so we know that's where we have a break. Now, what about, <coughs> what about the, the slope of this thing, though? Maybe we've got a sharp corner. So we've got to go back up here and check this one again for a sharp corner. This one we already know. It's, you know, it's derivative doesn't exist there. So let's go back. And let's look at this first part. Now, what's the, we want to know what is y prime as x approaches negative 2 from the left? Right, well, if I, that's going to be differentiate this, isn't it? What's that going to give us? Two times the quantity x plus 3. Then the derivative of x plus 3 is just 1. So 2 times x plus 3. And we could say that the limit of y prime as x approaches negative 2 from the left then would be what? 2. Right? Now that's okay to do. Look what we just did. We took the, we're taking the limiting behavior of the derivative. That's okay. So as the ant is approaching negative 2 from the left, his slope sensor is telling him, it, it's, it's anticipating that the slope is going to be 0 here, right? Now, what about the limit from the right? Okay, so y prime as x approaches negative 2 from the right is going to be the derivative of this guy. What's that? 2. Okay, well, that's constant in 2. Now, those match up. So that means it's not a sharp corner. As he's walking into that junction, he's got the same slope from both sides. So they match up. Not only do they match up, there's not a discontinuity. They match up in a way where the slopes are the same. It's a smooth transition. Right? So if that's not the same as a sharp corner. Right. So if those derivatives were different, it would have been a sharp corner. Then he would have been, what, what if this one had been like negative 2? Then as he approached from the left, he would have been anticipating a slope of positive 2, when he gets to that point, as he gets coming from the right, it would have been a slope of negative 2, and those needed a sharp corner there. Does that make sense? That didn't happen. They matched up. So the only place we have a discontinuity is at 5. Those were the big ones. I think if we can just do one more, yeah, maybe this. I mean, this this isn't that big a deal. I don't think. Tell me how to do this. Okay. The what, the tricky part of this is just that you have to use quotient form. That's really it. <coughs> Got to use quotient. So, what's that going to give you? Bottom, right? Times derivative of the top, which is what? Eight. And minus. All the 
fight is alright. Okay, so what's that going to give you? 32x plus 56 minus 32x plus 4. I'm going to subtract the negative. So I'm going to get 60 on the top. The x's will cancel, right? So I just get 60 over the quantity 4x plus 7 squared. You don't want to do that one. What's that? You don't want to do that one. No, no, no. You want to leave it back there. Yeah, much smaller. Yeah. Okay? We good? Is that about it? No. That's about it. All right. Very good.